In this video, I want to show you how Android Studio provides a number of code templates that help you create apps and or new activities to get you started. So let's begin by creating a new Android Studio project and let's call this code template and we can go with the default and choose next. I want to stick with API 19 and choose next. From here, previously we've looked at an empty activity which gave you the main activity class as well as an activity layout file. But you'll notice there are additional templates. Now some of these are fairly obvious. You can click through and kind of see, you know, you can get a sense for what they are. Um, a few of them even integrate with some of the Google services. So you have AdMod Ads activity, you've got a Google Maps activity. You have one for login that gives you uh, kind of a sample login screen and the code behind it. And then you have some additional navigation type activities here. Let's start with the navigation drawer activity. Go ahead and select that and choose next. We'll go with the defaults and then choose finish. Now, depending on whether you've loaded any of these code templates before or if you've been using Android Studio for a while, it may have take some time to download the dependencies. Sometimes you may see a Gradle loading and it'll indicate that it's downloading a bunch of files and it may take a while. It usually only happens the first time and then afterwards it goes a lot faster. So this is showing uh, it automatically created our main activity class and notice that it has a lot more code and this represents the code behind all the visual elements that it comes with. Uh, notice the content main uh, represents this text to view that's loaded right here. But you'll notice over here that there's this floating action button, but it's actually not listed on here. If I come back and uh, if you're not seeing it already, you go into app and then your res folder and then layout. Notice there's a, a number of additional layout files. We have the activity main, which represents our root layout. And notice that it's a type of drawer layout. And then it has an include, which means that it references additional layout files, as well as the navigation view. We got the app bar main. And notice here's app bar main. So that's where this references. So if I, let's take a look at app bar main. This represents uh, the, we've got the toolbar, we've got the layout, the floating action button is right here. Then we have content main, which is already open. And then finally we have nav header main. And this represents, notice it's just the header of this layout. Now, first we need to see what this looks like. So uh, let's go ahead and run it. You can run it on your device or you can run it in an emulator. I've got uh, this is a Nexus 9 tablet emulator running, and then I've also got a Nexus phone emulator, but uh, I'll go ahead and click OK. Uh, I'm going to proceed without instant run, and then let me just bring up my tablet emulator. And once this builds, then it's going to install on the device. All right, so this template includes, notice that we have our app bar or toolbar, and we've got this hamburger menu and it slides out. Here's the header we've already seen, but then you have some menu items. Now, if you click these, nothing will happen. It just closes it. I'll show you where you can add additional code to launch another activity. So again, the hamburger menu, and then it slides out. And then if I click away, it dismisses it. Then we also have this menu, additional menu button up here. And right now it just has a settings option. I click away and it disappears. And then here's our floating action button. If I click that, it says, hey, here's a toast message saying, yeah, replace with your own action. All right, so that's what it looks like on the device. Go ahead and go back to Android Studio and stop the process. Well, Go back to main activity, and again, we've talked about we have code that initializes the floating action button, 
initializes the drawer layout uh, as well as the navigation view. Then there's some listeners for when we press the back button, we close the drawer if it's open, things like that. And then notice down here we have on navigation items selected. This represents the sidebar which includes these items here. Well, we didn't see those in our layout files, but this is a list of items that there's a there's a layout file somewhere. Now here's a shortcut, and this is something if you're on a Windows machine, you press Alt, press and hold Alt. If you're on a Mac, you press and hold Command. And when I am holding down the key and I mouse over it, notice it gives me some additional information. And this one happens to say activity main drawer.xml. If I go ahead and click that, then it launches the layout file and there are those menu options. Well, if you notice these are all referenced as a menu, notice here on the left in our res folder we also have a menu folder and guess what? There's the activity main drawer XML. All right, so that's a quick shortcut in how to find or navigate between the various layout files or from within the uh, class files. So for example, if I go back to my main, uh, let's see, content main, and let's see, here's the navigation view. And so I'm pressing Alt or press Command on a Mac. Notice when I mouse over, it says, hey, there's that, and I can click and go to that layout file. All right. Now, in addition to being a template that you can create when you start an app, you can also add a new template based on these uh, ones provided. So if I go over to my app module and I right click and I choose new and I go down here to activity, then notice I have some options here and I can either go to the gallery and here's as if I had just started and I can scroll through and I can see them or if you know the one you want, you can go ahead and, and add that. So uh, for our purposes, let's go and add a scrolling activity. Select that and choose Next. Now this will come up with some suggested uh, names. We can go ahead and keep that. Now it does ask for this hierarchical parent, which is related to uh, having a back button or an up button. So if I, if I come over here, notice it's not giving me any hints, but if I select the additional, the more button, then it brings up within the project and then here's our main activity. Go ahead and select OK and then choose Finish. Now this is going to create the files that we need. So here, notice in our class files we have the scrolling activity. And then if we're trying to look for the um, layout file, obviously we can look in the layout, but as things start to get more involved, you know, the, it might just be simpler to just use our shortcut and then click to navigate. And here in this layout file, we have a bunch of sample code. We also have, we have what we call the collapsing toolbar layout, which is this taller uh, layout, uh, taller menu bar. And as you scroll up, it shrinks and then allows you to see more text. Here's some sample text. We have another floating action button uh, on this screen. So we've added the activity, but in order to navigate to it, let's go back to our main activity and notice remember we had these options down here we can select one of these now obviously I'm not going to modify these here but for the sake of what we're trying to do we want to uh, navigate to this scrolling activity so remember in order to do that we need to create an intent so if I start typing and then I press tab, I get my code hints and, and notice it automatically imported it. Now we're going to call this intent. 
and this is going to be equal to a new intent and we reference the context which is this meaning the activity that we're calling it from and then we're going to call our new activity which is scrolling activity and notice we have that and it's the class all right and for this intent we're not going to pass any information so we just want to launch this so I can just go ahead and say start activity and pass in the intent whoops intent all right very good let's run that and see what it looks like go ahead and select my already running emulator And then from here, we're just going to check out the menu and we put this on gallery. And now we have our scrolling activity. Very good. So that's how you can work with the code templates to help create activities and apps built uh, with the, a lot of the common navigation items. In future videos, we're going to use a number of these other templates. And so we'll talk through them as we go. But thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and look for the next video.